Hey Hannah Mouse One here. Can you believe I spent three whole years working on a scratch project? Because I have. This is A Farmer's Life, a top-down 2D farming simulator game that I've been developing entirely in Scratch. I started this project to prove that professional quality games can be made using the most beginner-friendly of software, and along the way I've been documenting the progress through regular devlog videos. Since I've already made full recap videos for years one and two, I'll keep those quite brief and focus more on what's been added in the past year. The project began as a follow-up game to a game jam game called Official life. In the first few months I built a simple version where you could walk around a farm, chop trees, break rocks and plant crops. Players could visit a shop to buy eight different seeds and I included three root vegetables that act as their own seeds. Once that basic version was out I started layering in more advanced systems. First came research upgrades that sped up crop growth, increased yields and reduced watering needs. I then added fruit trees that grow slowly but produce fruit indefinitely. Mining and crafting systems followed along with basic achievements and UI to show your farming progress. I also introduced a bulletin board where players could fulfill bulk item requests for better profits than they'd get for selling directly in the shop. After gathering player feedback, I fixed bugs and improved the visuals. I added early game tasks like harvest 10 wheat or buy a furnace and created text tutorials to help players who needed a refresher. The year ended with a new buildable location, the barn, constructed via the hardware store. Year 2 began with livestock. I added chickens, cows and pigs to the barn, chickens lay eggs, cows produce milk and all three could be slaughtered for meat. Two new workspaces were introduced, the refinery and the butcher block, used for processing animals animal products. I also added unique music tracks for different areas. This became the animals update. Next came fishing. I added a fishing hut where players can bait three nets using one of three bait types. Insects found by farming, refined baits crafted from insects, and commercial baits purchased at the fishing hut's shop. I overhauled the research lab with more organised options and added fertilisers. This formed the fisherman's update. To expand farming, I added nine new crops and introduced bombs to make mining more dynamic. Character customization was next. Players can now adjust eye, hair, and skin in colour and add features like beards or glasses. I added cotton, leather from cows and wool from sheep to support clothing crafting. This led to three new locations, a clothes store for buying and selling outfits, a farmhouse for decorating and a furniture shop to furnish the farmhouse. At the request of a viewer, I also added bees before releasing the individuality update rounding out year two. Year three began with the shipping depot, a late game location where players can trade large quantities of goods for exotic crops. It can be constructed via the hardware store and is supported by new lab upgrades to improve trade value and unlock additional trade types. I then added all the exotic goods that the player could earn through trades. These included standard crops like pineapples, soybeans and chilli peppers, water-based crops like rice and sugarcane, and trees like coffea and cacao. I introduced five berry bushes, strawberry, raspberry, gooseberry, blueberry and blackberry, which could each be harvested three times before they're destroyed. This required new mechanics for water-based and limited harvest crops, as well as research upgrades to enhance berry bush productivity. The next major addition was the restaurant. Here players can use their produce to cook recipes, grouped into collections. Completing a collection grants bonuses like reduced shop prices or faster crafting. I added this new buildable location to the map along with a new NPC, Gitano. There are 88 recipes in total divided into two generic collections and themed collections for each NPC. British pub grub for Andy, Indian cuisine for Sasha, Italian dishes for Gitano and so on. New recipes unlock as your friendship with each character improves. I also integrated cooking into the existing systems with related tasks and achievements. All of this culminated in the culinary update. Since then, I've been overhauling the game's visuals. I created a unified colour palette and reworked all tiles and objects to match it. Key objects and the player now have outlines and drop shadows to better separate them from the background. I completely redesigned the map to feel like a cohesive world rather than a patchwork of green squares. The task system received a full makeover with many new tasks and a cleaner UI organised by system, farming, mining, animals and cooking. I also introduced a particle manager to add small effects when performing actions like tilling, chopping or mining. Players can now expand both both the farm and quarry. Quarry expansions unlock new ores to use to further upgrade tools. To reinforce the sense of progression, the shipping depot and restaurant can now only be built after the farm is expanded. Finally, I began updating the visuals for shops, menus, and various UI screens, a process still underway. I anticipate one or two more devlogs to finish the graphical overhaul before I begin on the game's story. But apart from that, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you did. It lets me know that this is something you want to see more of. Join the Discord, link down below, and I'll see you next week with another video. Bye!